The Antigua and Barbuda government denies that Carnival Cruise Lines is cancelling calls to the Twin Island nation and in sport Jamaica's FIFA Women's World Cup squad to be selected in a matter of weeks. I'm Ricardo Robertson. This is Caribbean in 10 for Wednesday, March 13th, 2019. I'll be back with the details after the break. <laughs> President of the Antigua and Barbuda Cruise Tourism Association, Nathan Dundas, is being accused by the Twin Island Nations government of scaremongering following his statement that Carnival Cruise Lines has cancelled several scheduled calls to the country. Dundas has told the local media that Antigua had been scrapped from the itinerary of the Carnival Breeze, Carnival Magic, Carnival Legend and Carnival Pride cruise ships which were scheduled to sail to St. John's for the 2019-2020 winter season, and he warned of more cancellations to follow. But in a statement issued late yesterday, Tourism Minister Charles Fernandez said the comments were misleading and deceptive and caused unnecessary fear among cruise stakeholders. He said that what Dundas did not say was that Carnival Cruise Lines normally make only three to four calls to Antigua and Barbuda annually. The minister said the one exception was the 2017 to 2018 winter season when hurricanes decimated other destinations, causing Carnival to call at Antigua's fully functioning port. Now Fernandez said the total number of passengers that could be affected by the Carnival cancellations is approximately 12,200, which he said is a relatively small number of total cruise passengers that visit Antigua and Barbuda annually, annually. And he dismissed Dundas's claims of massive fallout. Minister Fernandez said, quote, while we regret any loss of business, however small in percentage terms, we do not anticipate any significant adverse impact of, on the stakeholders in our economy, end quote. The Bermuda government says it's confident the territory will soon be removed from the new blacklist released by the European Union on Tuesday. The island, along with Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, Belize and Dominica, was included on a list of 15 countries deemed non-cooperative jurisdictions for tax purposes based on an assessment done by the European Commission. At a press conference where he was backed by the island's top business leaders, Premier David Booth said yesterday that it was disappointing that crafting and implementing a regime that would meet the required test had not been enough to prevent the island being blacklisted. But he said it was a setback for the British Overseas Territory that would soon be overcome. He assured that between now and May, when the EU committee meets next, or next meets rather, a uh, fair assessment of Bermuda's legislation will confirm its compliance and it will be removed from the list. Bermuda is compliant and we are confident that within a matter of weeks that will be accepted by EU member states and Bermuda will be removed from this list. This confidence is shared by the United Kingdom government who through the Treasury specifically stated, and I quote, that Bermuda has legislated to address the issue identified. In light of this, we expect Bermuda and other compliant jurisdictions to be removed from the list at the next available opportunity. End quote. Venezuela's Supreme Court is being asked to investigate opposition leader Juan Guaido for allegedly sabotaging the country's electrical system. Much of Venezuela has been without power since last Thursday. 
President Nicolas Maduro has said that U.S. technology use, was used to sabotage the electricity grid and he has pointed fingers at the opposition. But Guaido says the outage is due to government's mismanagement. Now, since the power cut, the two sides have been playing the blame game for the electricity crisis. So far, according to a tally kept by an opposition lawmaker, 24 people are reported to have died as a result of the power cut. Meanwhile, the U.S. State Department has announced it will withdraw all diplomatic staff from Venezuela this week due to the deteriorating situation in the Spanish-speaking nation. And Guadalupe is set to join the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the OECS, as an associate member. The French Caribbean island will be admitted to the sub-regional grouping when OECS leaders meet there in a special session tomorrow. Last week, more than 100 people attended a conference at the University of Antilles on Guadeloupe's impending accession. Now, the organizers of that forum said it was designed to better understand the OECS and the, the priority areas of collaboration between Guadeloupe and the other OECS member states, which are Antigua and Barbuda, Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Kitts and Nevis, Montserrat, Anguilla and the British Virgin Islands. Stay with us. Your Midday Sport is next. At the University of Guyana on the question of the diaspora and the rule, I presented a paper that has just been uh, published by the University of Guyana. And I want to read just a sentence of the contribution that Guyanese abroad have been making. Remittances represent more than foreign direct investment and nearly as much as current official development assistance from all donor parties. So that sauce being some attention being paid to the sauce on the side of Team Barbados. Looks like she's very happy with it. So <laughs> Oh! <laughs> Beijing from South <Plaza> Beto. <laughs> One Caribbean. That's... Chef Barish passing by Mimni Trinity. I should get an idea of what he's thinking about, what he's seeing here. Interesting concept. Peter, just like you and his watch sometimes, Peter, because some of the concepts they come up with, we, we don't think about. Jamaica's squad for this year's FIFA Women's World Cup in France is expected to be selected following a training camp in South Africa next month. Now, the camp will run from April 1st to 9th, and assistant coach Andrew Price believes the current 24-member training squad will be whittled down to the final 14 thereafter. Now, Price praised the side's attitude in both matches uh, and said there would be tough competitions for places. Jamaica became the first Caribbean country to qualify for a FIFA Women's World Cup when they beat Panama on penalties in the third place match at the CONCACAF Women's Championship last October. Now, since then, they have been undergoing preparation for the June 7th to July uh, 7th showpiece where they feature in Group C alongside Australia, Italy and Brazil. In two recent friendly matches against Chile, they pulled one off a 1-0 win over the South Americans before edging them 3-2 a few days later. Meanwhile, an 18-man squad is expected to be named soon for the Guyana Golden Jaguars, who will take on Suriname in a qualifier for the CONCACAF Gold Cup this weekend. The South American countries will clash on Saturday at the Pear Can Stadium in Suriname. Guyana's head coach Michael Johnson says the match is expected to be a stiff test for the players. He says the match will seek to test the progress made in team preparation, technical areas and the team's overall understanding of the game. The Jaguars have ramped up efforts leading up to the crucial qualifier after squaring off with the East Bank Demerara Football Association select team last Saturday in a training match at the GFF's National Training Center at Providence. There, they are also expected to face Belize in the final CONCACAF Nations League qualifier on March 23rd at the National Track and Field Center in Lenora. That's Caribbean in 10. Good afternoon. <laughs>